Hi guys, I'm Becky from RJF Makes and if you're watching this video today you'll be wanting to make the Octavia wallet. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Becky. Um, I basically own a sewing brand called RJF Makes and that's www.rjfmakes.com and you'll see I make bags, bears, quilts, anything really. I'm a craft pattern designer as well as um, selling hardware for bag making um, because that's that's something I love. I'm addicted to bags. So today if you tuned in today you'll be wanting to make the Octavia wallet. Now this pattern is either out, due out or you've already had it. Right so I'll go through that <laughs> for you. Right, so this pattern, the Octavia Wallet, was originally released a couple of weeks ago on the 25th of, what month was we in? August, on the Sewing Street um, channel, TV channel here in the UK. Now they get it exclusive for a couple of weeks. I'm putting this video up now this week, and um, which is a week after, for those people that have actually brought it from um, Sewing Street. However, don't stress, <clears throat> this pattern is going to come available in a couple of weeks time over on my um, website which is rjfmakes.com um, I'll be releasing that all over social media and dropping a, um, a short a short story within um, YouTube of when this, is re when this is released. So you're looking at mid-September. This pattern comes as digital download and paper pattern. So the digital downloads have never been available, only the paper patterns were released as an exclusive um, short launch on Sewing Street. Now, those who have actually received their kits from Sewing Street or who are buying the pattern from me as paper pattern, you'll notice there's a little sticker up here. It means that the paper patterns and the digital downloads are going to come with a freebie. Right, so first of all, I'm going to talk about the actual wallet itself. I just love this. It's a nice size. I'm not going to lie, it is a bit bigger than what I normally carry around in my handbag. However, I've designed this so it could be carried around just as it is. So it's just an easy wallet. It's got four card slots here and another four card slots there and it's got a little um, pouch in the centre. Now the whole point of the large pouch in the centre is so you can carry um, lots of me lipstick or lip balm or um, I carry a lot of change with me because obviously the kids like to go to the sweet shop and the sweet shop doesn't take cards payments so obviously the coins need to go somewhere. But um, yeah, the, we have a lot of cards um, as people. Carry around a lot more cards these days than what we used to. So there is eight card slots. However, I personally can double up each card slot. So I can hold 16 cards in here. Also, the good thing about this, when I haven't got my case on my mobile phone, my mobile phone actually fits in these large slip pockets as well. You can make it with the large version with the wrist strap or without the wrist strap. That's totally up to you. You can even go ahead and if you have got a bit of um, knowledge of how to do it, you can actually, rather than doing a magnetic snap, you can actually use a small press lock here. Totally up to you. You've got to make this yourself. Um, make it your own design. That's what I'm trying to say. Make it your own design. Use your own fabrics. Now within the video I do talk about what types of fabrics I would use as the body. Personally I like to use cork because it's got a bit of a body to it or a PU leather. Now I've got all cork versions out here today but I have made one in PU leather before. Now for the freebie you only get the templates. So in the pattern and that's either digital download or paper pattern, the freebie is the small version. And the small version basically is just templates. 
However, it's the same construction, same measurements as in like serve um, to construct the card slots, how to add the magnetic snap. The only difference is, is the zip is smaller. The card slots are cut different um, and all the other pieces are just a bit smaller. So don't worry, all that is mentioned on the template cut out pieces. So don't stress, you're not by yourself and having to work out measurements and that, all that is there. However, I don't talk through how to make this one in the video. However, there is a short mini video at the end, a video clip of a fast footage of me making one just to show you how quickly and easy it can come together. Follow the instructions for how to make the large one to make the small one. It's just simple. However, you can't add a strap to the small one. There is nowhere to actually put it. Um, but other than that, it's pretty simple to make. It's handy, no small size. Even one of my testers even made the suggestion of not just put, not doing this part here and making this for a gentleman and just having card slots. Now, if that's the case, if you know how to extend the card slot pieces of um, fabric so you can actually add a second uh, a third card slot on each side and then it just fold up a lot slimmer than what it does here because at the moment I can't fit this in my back pocket it's quite a large one so you're still going to have to have like um, a bag to put that one in but I know I'm going to be making a few of these for the few teenagers that we've got in our family so they're going to be handy anyway yeah so i've talked a bit about it and um, there's going to be so much more information in the videos to come so if you're new to my channel hi i'm becky thanks for joining me and if you like this video please click the thumbs up yay and um, click the subscribe button and then you'll also find there's a notification bell if you haven't already subscribed to my channel there's a notification bell somewhere down here here on there uh, somewhere here here and um, click that notification bell and every time I upload a video you will get notified that a new video is available to watch and I have a lot of videos on this channel I think it's about 70 plus now um, the videos can be um, either free patterns or they work alongside patterns that I'm releasing to the general public right for ado, shall we get making this bag okay so this is the Octavia wallet that I've just been talking to you about in the actual um, starting of the video. The Octavia wallet is named Octavia because it's got four card slots one side and another four cards, card slots the other side, which gives us eight card slots, which is like an octagon, which has got eight sides. Now, thanks to Lynn Turit, my proofreader, who came up with that idea of the name. So you've got four card slots this side, four card slots this side, and then you've got a really large um, inside zip pocket pouch. The large version you can make with a wrist strap um, or without. It's totally up to you how you want to make it. Um, I, I like the large wrist strap because it um, means that I'm just taking this out when I go out to pubs and um, for a meal rather than the whole bag that I would carry it in. There is some large slip pockets here for likes of a mobile phone. It fits a standard mobile phone, not the really large ones, but just a standard mobile phone. In here, you can also fit your um, lippy lipsticks, um, a bit of makeup in there, as well as your coins. If you're making the small version, which I haven't got here at the moment, which you would have seen at the start of the video, um, the small version is we eliminate this wrist strap here because it's just too much and too big. Also, um, you'll notice with the small version there is only four card slots whatsoever. So there'll be two on this side, two on this side. It's half the size, so the pocket is smaller. Now, some people, what well, some of my testers were saying, this was quite small. So one tester came up with the idea of just make it into a card wallet rather than a actual 
having a coin section so if you want to just make it as a card wallet the small one just eliminate the small pouch in the middle now we'll talk about the pattern the pattern um, instructions are, are just for the large version now if you're making the small version on your template template pull out sheets from the digital download or the paper pattern you will have some additional notes now I'm using the paper pattern um, for my video instructions here however this will be on the um, the digital download as well so the cutting out has a bit of additional information for the small um, wallet so just basically where you will still work along this pattern here for the um, the small wallet so when you come to the cutting out section just refer back to this one and this and just see what the measurements are how they are different so like the small body the small wallet the body lining piece the body lining piece uh, measurements are, are different so please refer back to those also um like the zip tab and the card slots and the decoville pieces i will get onto the decoville strips in a minute the d-ring tab and the wrist strap it just tells you you do not need to do those um obviously because it's a bit too small to have the wrist strap on bias binding is exactly the same apart from it's a shorter length and then basically the zip um is obviously a shorter zip but like i say you don't have to make the zip now with this video instructions um, we're only going to I'm going to verbally talk you through the large version and then at the end of this video there'll be a little speed footage up of me making the small version with um, no voiceover just music and basically you can um, just watch how I construct it it's exactly the same construction as this however just a few things are cut out different that's all so just talking about the, um, the the pattern templates the pattern templates um, if you've brought the digital download my advice is to print out the first template sheet so you'll notice there's a square in the one of the um, the first template sheets the square should measure one inch when you print it out if it doesn't measure one inch in the top left hand corner you need to go back into your printer settings check to make sure it's at 100% or actual size then print it out again then re-measure the square and then if it measures one inch go ahead and print the rest of the pattern including the um, the actual instruction pages now with the paper template um, pa um, the, the template sheet it's a massive template sheet and I mean huge template sheet you've got a dividing section for the large wallet so if you only want to ever make the large wallet just cut out the large section and then you've got the small section on this side with the additional information keep that as one sheet if you're not making the small version if you're making both cut them all out but keep this part with the pattern um, the paper pattern booklet this is going to be a, a lifesaver when you want to make it remake it again and again with the templates um, just cut all the way around the outer edge on the black line on every piece um, and you'll notice with the um, the template pieces if I just find the other template piece for this okay so this is the pouch section inside the middle here this part here this is your fabric pieces and your interface pieces this, um, this template here then you'll also see there is generally a smaller version of each pattern template that could be to do with the foam stabiliser the fusible fleece stabiliser um, or decaville stabiliser you need to read the instructions and where it says fleece on the template or decaville or foam you need to cut this piece out of the foam and what will happen is when you come to fuse the fusible fleece to the wrong side of your fabric piece and your inter uh, interfacing piece once we fuse that into the center it will leave you a gap a quarter of an inch all the way around that's to stop bulkiness in your seams now i will explain all that in the pattern when we um when we come to the cutting out section 
so I'm just going to jump past the cutting out section and we're going to go on to the bias binding section now the bias binding section is quite a brief cutting how to cut your own bias binding there is a additional video that you need to follow on how I personally cut out my bias binding to make sure it's on the 45 degree angle of your fabric so it gives you that stretch the video link is in this top hand corner so if you click the i button and go to um, how to make the bias binding click on that video whenever you're ready to make your own bias binding what you do need to do is make sure your bias binding once double folded measures three three quarters of an inch wide so you're cutting out your fabric at one and a half inches wide strips if you do not cut your um, bias binding this width and it doesn't measure a qu uh, three quarters of an inch once double folded what will happen is and most some, some of my testers actually found this flaw what they found out was once they did all the binding around the edge here around this edge here when they came to sew this part the top bit to this part here to give it that neat finish and it's the final steps they found their card slots were too small to fit cards in these card slots are so snug because card slots do stretch over time so i've made them so so snug and so tight to start off with if you were to use any binding that's wider than this once it's finished you will find the card slots are too small to start off with so please do make sure once it's double folded it's three quarter of a three quarters of an inch because once it's folded it should be a quarter of an inch all the way around so i'm stressing that now if you may if you're buying pre-made binding please make sure it's um three quarters of an inch double folded okay so i don't go into the video into depth on how to make the bias binding um basically you need to click on that eye link in the top hand corner here or the video link down the bottom within the description to actually identify on how to make um your own bias binding out of the fabric now out of the fabric uh, the bias binding should come out of some of the fabric pieces that are mentioned in here i've allocated for you to make bias binding out of this fabric here anyway okay so i basically go into a brief information on how to attach the bias binding however you will find the video a lot more constructive and a lot more information given within that video uh, within the video on how to attach bias binding it's hard to put into words <laughs> that's what i'm trying to say for a dyslexic person it's hard to put into words on how to attach bias binding so the f pictures are quite visual however follow this video and um, it will it's going to be far greater in detail with how to attach bias binding and then basically it's straightforward pattern when we come to make the card slots you'll see this diagram i will mention in the video i will not give these measurements out um in the video or no measurements i will basically say refer back to installing the female part of the snap or the um you need to do it at this measurement which is listed within this page here it's basically so you know you need to refer back to the pattern um for like installing the snap and stuff like that but you will be told how to install snaps but i just won't list measurements this diagram here quickly just showing you is where we have to draw lines onto the card slot section and where we have to fold it we keep referring back to that and that's for the large wallet as well as the small wallet and then basically it's an easy pattern construction like i say you don't need to do the wrist strap so once you get to this part and you've had the bias binding where it says attach the bias binding section which you need to refer back to the start the wrist strap doesn't have to be made however if that's the case if you're not making the wrist strap you don't have to make the d-ring strap on this page either um the d-ring tab like i say if you have any problems please do message me um it's 
you can find me on social media all the links down below for social media and um, you can go to www.rjfmix.com and you'll see contact me um, down the bottom uh, with one of the email addresses which is hello rjfmix at gmail.com message me private message me just basically don't struggle I'm always there drop a comment below I can always help you um, via the video as well right so let's get on to the pieces of cutting out right so I have cut out the large as well as the small okay so I'm going to talk through the large first so I'll just move that out of the way okay so we're going to talk with the main outer body piece first the main outer body piece needs to be a substantial um, piece of fabric it's not going to be doubled over because obviously it's just lying flat once we once we actually work with it there is no it's not folded over anywhere like this um, so it can be a slightly heavier fabric so my advice is to go ahead and use something like cork fabric, leather, faux leather, PU, um, PU leather to the British, we call it PU leather. Um, a strong cork fabric, like um, something that's got like a good thickness to it. I'm using cork fabric today. You can use fabric. You can use um, a woven um, quilter's weight cotton, like what you're using inside. Uh, but my motto is you need to double interface it. Um, so where it says cut out one piece of interfacing, cut out two to make it just that bit stronger to give it that body that you actually need. Now, if you are using woven, um, any form of woven or PU fabric, which is faux leather or PU, you do need to interface it at least once. Now, if you're using cork fabric, which has got a good thickness too, you do not need to interface it. And if you're using a leather, which is a, a strong leather, um, you do not need to interface it. However, you do need to cut the foam, fusible foam stabilizer. Now that's out of your foam stabilizer body piece. Once you've, you've fused the interfacing, to the wrong side of the body you need to fuse the foam piece to the center so that's the foam piece to the center so that's your main body piece and I've done the exactly same piece for my small piece as well so <clears throat> and I've done the same construction around the edges as well so the next thing you got is your flap which is this part here, the closure bit. You're going to have a lining piece as well as a main outer piece. Both of those, my advice is to do in cotton fabric. Um, that's quilter's weight cotton fabric. You need to interface both of those pieces on the wrong side. And then on one of them, which is going to be your the one that you visually see all the time, <coughs> You need to cut the foam stabiliser out and fuse that into the centre on the wrong side which will give you approximately a quarter of an inch all the way around. And you do that for the small and for the large as well. So the next thing you got is the body lining piece. Now the body lining piece um, is a piece of fabric. Um, it has to be quilter's weight cotton. When I say the body lining piece, that is this pit here. Now it needs to have some body. So this is where the Decaville light comes into effect. So I have cut out my main um, lining body piece out of quilter's weight cotton. I have fused fusible, um, fusible interfacing to the wrong side so that's medium weight interfacing and then I've gone ahead and fused the Decaville light um, part into the centre and you've got this gap all the way around now this part here will be wasted over time however the reason why we have got this overhang here is when we pop this to this we need to make sure 
that there is at least half an inch free or five eighths of an inch free of Decaville and it's not in anywhere around the edges here. The reason being is um, it can get quite heavy um, to sew once we attach like the bias binding. So that's the reason why we've done that. But I will come to this part when we come through to the pattern. I've gone ahead and done that for my lining of the small piece. As you know, it is, it's a, a lot smaller. Next thing you'll need is your um, zip tabs. Now the zip tabs is to stop the zip getting into the seams um, on the pouch. So you'll need four pieces of those for both small and large wallet. The, the large ones are slightly longer than the small ones but the same width for the, um, the zip. I will talk about the zips and the pieces of hardware in a minute. You'll need four pieces but they're not interfaced. I just basically spritz some um, uh, starch onto those like sort of flatter or um, best press and you need four of those then you've got your pocket pieces which is your um your zip pocket pieces so you've got two lining pieces she says oh yeah two lining pieces you've got two lining pieces which has got interfacing on onto the wrong side and then you've got your two main outer fabric pieces you've got to fuse interface into the wrong side of these and then you will have the fusible fleece now the fusible fleece is a soft not as sturdy as um, the foam however it will give you a nice um, pouch to stand it will make your pouch stand up basically still and it needs to be fused in the center so you've got that free from um, fusible fleece you need to do that for both small and large wallet for the large wallet for additional if you want to go ahead you need the wrist strap and the d-ring so you've got your wrist strap which is four inches by 18 inches and you've fused fusible um, interfacing on the wrong side here as well and then you've got your d-ring tab which is this bit here your d-ring tab has got interfacing on the wrong side as well now the last pieces that you will have to fuse interface into is um, your um, card slots you'll have your two large card slots pieces which will make you your two sets of card slots either side in your wallet and you will have fusible interfacing on the wrong side and that's medium weight interfacing now it doesn't matter if you use woven interfacing or non-woven interfacing it's totally up to you and you should do that for both the small and for the large wallet if you're making both and then the final piece is okay so the last thing you need for the cutting out is the decaville strips for the card slots now in the pattern um there is no specific dark um, header for the Decaville. You'll find it under the card slot section and it'll say the Decaville light and then it will have additional cutting out information. You need to cut, cut six strips of Decaville light and you need to do that for both small, um, the small wallet and the large wallet. So the last thing I'm going to talk about is the hardware. So the hardware, you'll need um, your zip. Obviously this is a super tiny zip. However, um, it will fit the small wallet and um, a magnetic snap with your two washer pieces. That's all you will need for the small wallet. Now for the large wallet, you'll need the zip, the magnetic snap. Now you can go ahead and like here add a nameplate if you want to however i'm not going to show you that in the actual um instructions or on the video um you just basically um attach that to about half an inch away from this um section bit here that you do that's personal choice at the end of the day 
and then you'll need your d-ring and your um swirl clasp but these are optional if you want to do those you can do the other things that i'm going to just quickly talk to you about is the um the information regarding what tools you'll need now the most most of the tools that i will use is fray check or fray stop depending on which brand that will stop your fabric from fraying in certain areas when we have to punch some holes into it you'll need some quilters tape which is double sided um, this is safe to sew over um, and it's a wash away tape so basically um, if you can visually see it after you've um, sewn over it and um, it's still exposed drop a little bit of water on and it will disappear if it hasn't disappeared it normally peels away anyway you'll need some wonder clips um the type of needle i will be using in my sewing machine is a 116 size so that's a size 16 size that's just a large nice large needle i'm going to use the gutemann sew all thread um, which is a polyester thread which has got that bit of elasticity to it especially if you're going to be making the wrist strap this could stretch over time and be pulled about if you use cotton thread the cotton thread will snap if it's pulled and stuff so it's best to use um, the the sew all thread by Gutemann or an equivalent brand you're going to need your marking tools but as i go along i'm going to point those out to you the other thing that i'm going to suggest is either a teflon foot or a walking foot on your sewing machine now i'm using a teflon foot um however if you have got a standard sewing machine i'll be doing it on a semi-industrial sewing machine today but if you're doing it on a normal sewing machine my advice is to get a walking foot attached it just means it goes over bulk and it's nice and easier to sew through and it'd be a, a pleasant sew rather than a struggle and i don't want you to give up basically so that's basically it and we're going to jump straight into making the large wallet first um i'm going to talk you through the large wallet and then at the end of the video you will see um just a small video um speeded up with music um on how to make the small wallet okay for this part of the um the sew along you'll need your main outer body piece your two flat pieces and your magnetic snap now you should have all your interface infused um, and um, your um, heavy stabilizer which is could be your foam it will it will be your foam in this case so first off we're going to pop those to one side I'm just going to talk about the magnetic snap now the magnetic snaps are very powerful that I sell so the patterns the downloadable pattern and the paper pattern can be bought from my shop or you might have bought it previously from um, a shopping brand called Sewing Street um, there was either kits on Sewing Street which is hardware kits um, and just the paper pattern these magnetic snaps from my shop are very strong so you do need to like literally get your nail in to prise them apart once they're on the actual wallet you are fine it's just getting the initial parts undone to start off with but it does they do come apart they're not stuck permanently right so i'm just going to talk you a bit through the uh, magnetic snaps oops so you should get two washers which is for your prongs on the back your prongs which are I'm hoping you can see it the two little legs that stick out the back <laughs> of each piece and then you've got a one that's got an inverted dimple and one that's got a um a dimple coming out this is your male part which is normally generally the slimmest part then you've got your female which is the dimple inverted dimple and that's normally got the magnetic part to it so it can be slightly thicker than the male part so for starters we're going to work with the female part and pop the male part to one side and one of the washers we're going to work on the main body so you're going to fold it in half 
to find the two centres now. You've already found the centre of the two long sides from when you've actually literally drawn out the, um, the, the template. And you're just going to fold this in half and find the centre here and the centre here. Generally, we're going to snap, uh, snip in one eighth of an inch into the seam allowance. Now, the seam allowance when we're sewing on this whole pattern is quarter of an inch. However, when we come to sew in the zips, we will use one uh, three eighths of an inch. But I will mention this as I go along. Right, so you're going to measure from one short edge up one and a half inches. And we're going to pop a mark and now from now on I will not mention any measurements you will have to refer back to the pattern and I will keep showing you that on the pattern okay so once you've made your mark you're going to get your washer and you've got a hole in the center and two straight um, slits either side the hole in the center needs to go over the top of the mark and you're going to draw on those two slits now you're going to either get like your quick on pick or something to stab through those two slits I'm using like a scalpel which has got like a hook on it and it's got like a hook on it and you do not want to go past those two drawn slit marks so don't cut any further and those two drawn slits marks and you're going to make sure you're cutting all the way through and then you're going to get your female part just open up my prongs a bit because they're squashed together pop that through those two slits might need to help it out a bit here and the prongs should come through to the other side the foam side you're going to get your washer pop that on top now it doesn't matter whether you want to press the prongs outwards or inwards, it's totally up to you. Um, I'm not biased anyway, it's how my fingers are coping that day because I get arthritis. Then you're going to need something to cover that up. Now some people use um, just scrap pieces of interface and then fuse that over. I just use um, a brand called Duck Tape. Yeah, it's got unicorns on. I love unicorns. <laughs> Sorry, that's my mad half hour. So you're just gonna cut a small piece off and stick that over the top. We're doing this because when it comes to the lining piece, it won't rip through your lining. Those little bits that we folded over could still be sharp from the manufacturers. So we're just gonna pop that over it. Then we're going to pop this to one side we're going to get the lining part of the flap that's the one without the fusible um, foam attached to it we're going to find the center of the curve and snip into one eighth of an inch of the seam allowance then referring back to your pattern we're looking at step three in your pattern which is this part here you need to find the measurement that it tells you to measure up from the bottom from the curve edge and you need to make that mark and then once again we're going to pop this over the top draw the two lines you're going to get your tool that you make your holes with so you're going to cut into those two slits not going past those marks and then this time we're going to pop some fray check on because this is fabric based I'm hoping this has got holes in it yep you're just going to put a little piece little few drops on those areas while that's setting you need to grab a bit of fusible fleece about an inch by an inch and you need to cut two little slits in 
and this is just going to help you pad out the um, the magnetic snap so you're going to get your female part of your magnetic snap and pop that through the right side so the prongs come out to the wrong side now if you find find that your fray check has um, sealed up the holes because it can do because it's like a glue form just go ahead and peel those holes again so I've got my prongs coming back through to the wrong side we're going to get the fusible fleece and pop that over those two prongs and we're just basically padding it out a bit then you're going to get your washer pop that over the top and either in or out on those prongs and you're going to squash those I'm just going to cover it up with the tape just a small amount in this case so you're going to get your main outer piece pop that right side facing up and that's the one that's got the foam attached to it you're going to get the piece that we've just put the female um, the male part of the snap and you're going to pop that right sides together and you're going to clip all the way around the curve and the two long edges but not this area so I'm using Wonder Clips today so using a quarter of an inch seam allowance you're going to sew Reverse your stitches at the start and at the end and you're going to sew all the way around there. So using a stitch length um, 2.5, I've got my um, size 16 needle in. I personally got my Teflon foot because I'm using a semi-industrial sewing machine which can eat through, um, sew through bulky parts. However, if you're doing it on a dis domestic sewing machine, please go ahead and install your... Um, your walking foot you're going to use a quarter of an inch all the way around now personally I like to sew from this side I like to sew from this side so I know I'm um, by the actual phone So I've gone ahead and sewn all the way around, a quarter of an inch, I'll just get rid of that piece there. And what I'm going to do is trim back the seam allowance by half. You can use a pinking pair of sh um, shires if you need to, um, if you want to. But I'm just going to go ahead and just trim it back by half. Okay. So you've got that bit that's opened up here, you need to turn this right side facing out. At this stage, turn on your iron and get it warm um, so we can start pressing as we go along. You need a pokey tool to poke this out. Get right up inside, get that corner. all those seams now we're going to give that a really good press so we're going to give this a good press i just like to pop some steam on it now press it from both sides i'm using a woolen heat mat with a piece of wood underneath so it doesn't damage my um my cutting mat Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and top stitch all the way around, including this part, one eighth of an inch away. I'm going to use a stitch length number 3.5 on my sewing machine. So I've done the flap. You're going to pop that to one side. I'm just going to pop it there for now. 
You're going to grab your main body eye to piece, which we've attached the, the female lock to. I've just noticed my um, foam is just coming away, so I'm just going to spritz some steam onto that. So you're going to get your main body lining piece, and you've obviously fused the um, the Decaville into the centre. If you haven't done that already, please go ahead and do it. And we're working on this section here within the pattern. So the next thing you're going to do is pop this right side, uh, wrong side to wrong side. You're just going to flip this up and work out where your Decaville lands. Now you don't want the Decaville anywhere in the seam allowance. Like so. Then you're going to get a marking tool and draw all the way around this outer piece here. Now someone did ask me um, as a tester the reason why we've left this a bit larger is you can go ahead and actually quilt this. However, by quilting this, this main outer part piece comes smaller. Um, when you quilt something, it shrinks. So just bear that in mind. If you want to go ahead and do a quilted effect of this in the future, you will need to make this part a bit bigger. So I'll cut it the same width of this and then basically cut it out but then you are going to have to install the magnetic snap somehow. Now I've drawn all the way around as you can see I've got quite a large amount free of this Decaville. I'm going to cut this um, excess off. Then you're going to get your main outer piece and your um, lining piece, pop those wrong sides together and clip the two pieces together all the way around on the outer edge. I like to match up those corners first, then I know it's going to fit perfectly. over to make sure you've got nothing curled up underneath and then you're going to go to your sewing machine and base stitch these two pieces together now you're going to base stitch a quarter um one eighth of an inch all the way around you can't go past that quarter of an inch because the quarter of an inch will be seen once we sew everything together so I've now I've base stitched all the way around if you have any fabric overhang you need to trim that off um, I mean the lining overhang you need to trim that back to the body I'll just add a little bit there okay so the next thing you're gonna do is we need to make the um, the wallet bottom <laughs> as it's called so we need to sew this part here to give it that um that thickness that it needs for the pouch inside so you're going to fold this in half to find the two long centers like so and you're just going to snip it in the seam allowance okay if you've got any creases because Decaville does crease just give that a quick press and um, get any creases out of it Then you're going to 
get a marking tool which will either disappear with ink uh, with heat or will disappear with um, water or air from that center mark to this center mark you're going to draw all the way from one side to the other and you're going to do that on the line inside now I'm just waiting for my fabric to cool down because this is a heat um, disappears a pen that disappears with heat okay so I've got my center drawn line then either side of that line you're going to mark to the measurements that it states on this section here and that's either side of the drawn line so that's another mark there so you should have three marks so that is my center mark because my two center mark uh, marks on the edges are here and then you should have two marks either side then you're going to measure in and up from the edge and draw a line across there and across there so you should be left with something like this which has got three lines um, vertically in your case here and two horizontally now we're going to sew and top stitch around this part here we're not going to top stitch anything that's in the middle so we're not top stitching this part and this part here we're just going to do the rectangle which is from here down here to this mark here on the horizontal across and then back up again i'm going to use a stitch length number four and i'm going to top stitch from this side gone ahead and top stitched all the way around and that should come out to the right side of the main body now depending on what erasable marker you use you need to get rid of those mine was heat so I need to pop some heat onto that so you're now going to pop this to one side with your flap and now we're going to work on the um, the actual card um, pockets um, slip pockets okay so my card slot fabric is directional so obviously mine goes down this way in the pattern instructions In the pattern instructions it's got the diagram that we need to re keep referring back to there is a large piece and a small piece where the um, instructions are so my large piece here will be from this edge here which is where the um, the top edge of my um, pattern um, my pattern design is on your, my fabric so I'm going to start off with the larger measurement here so when I flip this over my first measurement will be on this side okay so referring back to the diagram this is my top edge which is the one which is where the pattern runs down on the actual fabric so I'm going to start with the larger measurement here and then work my way down please refer back to the pattern um, and that's on this section here
Right, so the next thing you're going to need is to find something that's got a crisp edge that can be um, pressed um, with your iron. I'm using a, um, a comic board, it's acid free so I want to tack your fabric um, and it's quite sturdy, it's about 300-350 gram weight. So you're going to get one of your card slots, you're going to turn on your own. I'm going to bring my iron into view. Okay. So starting off with the smallest amount of measurement first, we're going to pop the card or the, the sharp thing that you've got. A metal, um, a metal rule um, will be happy, um, will be enough. You're going to pop the whatever you're using to help with the pressing on where that first mark is and you're going to bring that piece up and you're going to press this while the card's still underneath or whatever you're using. I'm a bit caggy handed so I've got to do it this way. And you're going to just pop a bit of steam on there. Okay, so you should have that one done. This is the reason why you should never use a um, marking tool that can disappear with heat. You're now going to flip this over, still working on this edge here that we've done the fold, and you're going to find, pop the, the card or whatever you're using onto that folded area, and you're going to find where that next mark is. Then you're going to press. And then I'll just basically give it a bit of a steam press. Still keeping it folded like it is now with that little bit of an overhang. We're going to work on this mark here. So pop the card over the folded sections here and bring that back over. Okay, so still keeping this folded. Yep. Still keeping this folded. You're going to pop the card or whatever you're using on the folded section and you're going to search for that next set of line, that next line. And what you should see is some steps of folds coming up. Remove that card and just give it a good steam press. The last fold is keep this part folded, pop the card on the folded section and fold this over and give this a really good press. Then you're going to pull this away flip this over and give this a proper good steam so as you can see we've got some steps coming up here this is where your cards will go in you've got an overhang here that's fine that's for us to allocate for um, any allowances that we need to the only problem is with using a one directional fabric is this will go into your wallet sitting like this so the card slot holes are towards the pocket in center in the center what will happen is if you use a one directional fabric is if I flip this over everything on this side here which is this slip pocket here will be upside down. If you can live with that, go ahead to use one directional fabric. I personally can live with that. If you can't, you need to use a multi-directional fabric or a plain fabric. OK, 
okay so the next thing you're going to do is open it back up again so you've got like your folds and you've got the wrong side facing up you're going to grab three of your Decaville strips and where the folds go in not the ones that come out you're going to pop some Decaville strips into the center so your first one will go there on this part here and you're not going anywhere near that folded part you're about 1 16th away from that folded part and you've got a bit of a gap either side you're going to do one here and one here now I'm just going to have to get the tip of my iron to start setting these into place because mine are a bit bouncy at the moment so that's the glue side facing down onto the interfacing and I'm going to do the same with this one try and get it central if you can and then the same with this one you're trying your hardest not to touch the creases that we've already made because then all that hard work has gone for nothing okay so while that is kind of set you're going to refold it keeping those decorville pieces into the centerpiece and then we're just going to set those decorville pieces now with some steam, steam. and keep your iron there for a little while and that should have set those into place now it hasn't just on this one side so we're just going to do it a little bit more you can open them up if you want to So we're just going to pop this to one side and then I'm going to speed up the um, footage now and I'm just going to do the other card slot piece, do all the folding technique with the, um, the my comic board and then I'm going to put the Decaville strips in and then I'll come back. Okay, so you should have both of those um, now pressed and set with the Decaville. Now you're going to go ahead and um, top stitch one eighth of an inch away on each of the fold. You will need to move the folds out of the way when you top stitch the two um, inner folds and then obviously the outer fold. I'm even going to use a stitch length number three on my sewing machine. I'm going to do it for both of these. So you'll see me do this on my sewing machine um, and um, you basically get the gist of how I move the um, the pockets out of the way. Just note notice this needs a bit more of a press. Yeah. It has slightly moved and it obviously wasn't pressed in that area. So I'll go over to my sewing machine, use the stitch length number three and top stitch each of those folds. So that should be six top stitching lines for both, both pieces.
right so you should have those um, sewn one eighth of an inch away and you shouldn't have you should have sewn all the um, the folds now you need to find the center I do give prox measurement in the pattern and you're going to draw a line And you're going to draw that over the folds all the way down and you're going to do that on both pieces So with both of these, where we've drawn those two lines, we need to top stitch on those two drawn lines. Now where you got, where you have the two folds in, in between the two card slots, you need to back stitch a few times. So you're going to back stitch once, twice, and a third time here, and then basically repeat here. But you'll see me do that on my sewing machine. Um, now I'm going to use this top stitch of a stitch length number three. As you've just seen I've just got rid of the two black um, drawn lines um, because I used a heat eraser tool. Now you're going to get your main outer body, that's the one we've sewn the line into. Make sure you can still see the, um, the centres of the two shorter edges, so I'm just going to re-snip it into the lining part now. So. Getting one card slot set, we're going to use this as your centre line but first of all we need to draw, cut away this excess. So you're cutting away this excess to the edge of the first slip pocket. Where this um, centre sewn line is of your card slot we're going to match it up to the centre mark on the bottom. And you should have equal amounts either side from the body edge to the centre. I'm just going to pop a clip in where that centre one is. I'm just going to get a measuring tool and just make sure that's definitely equal amounts. Yeah. So you should have an overhang of card slot on each side. You're just going to clip along the base part here and you're going to clip down these two sides where the folds are mainly this is where we we want it to clip it now I'm just going to repeat the same with this card slot But now we're going to pop it onto this part of the body. Now you want the card slots and um, pocket holes to come into the centre.
Okay, so you're going to now flip this over and make sure nothing is curling up on the main body piece. Then you're going to base stitch along that already base, a base stitched line of sewn line around the edge. Make sure you reverse your stitches at the start and at the end of each pocket section. I'm going to use a stitch length number four on my sewing machine. Okay, so I've base stitched all the way around, removing my clips as I go, and as you can see it's base stitched. We're now going to trim off all the excess of the, um, the actual card pockets. And we're going to trim it back to the body outer edge. Okay, so you should have those two attached now. The next thing you can go ahead and do is we're going to attach the flap. So we're working on the opposite side of the, um, the female part of the snap. So it's this side with the wrong side of this. First of all, we need to find that center of this and just give it a little bit of a snip into the seam allowance. Okay, matching up the centre of this straight edge and the centre of this straight edge of the flap, pop these right sides together so this is the part that hasn't got the magnetic part of the snap on to the right side of the body and we're going to measure up, match up the two centres. like so and in theory what should happen is this should be in line with this snap here you're going to go and base stitch one eighth of an inch away from the edge and you're going to use a stitch length for um, a long stitch length Right, so the next thing we're going to do is work on the um, the pouch that goes inside. That's the zipper part of the um, the actual wallet. You need to make sure your zip is the correct length um, that it's required for the whichever size that you're making, whether that's the small or the large. We're working on the large at the moment. You're going to get your zip tabs. <coughs> And you're going to pop one right side facing onto the zip and match up the edges. That's that's just snapped. What? And flip it over and pop the pop another one right side facing to the wrong side of the zip. Make sure it's not folded up. Then we're going to do the same with this one. You're going to have to pull this part together. <coughs> if you want to, you can go ahead and sew over that bit. Um, personal choice. You're going to flip this over and then just pop that one right sides together as well. Right, so pulling my zip into the centre so it's out of the way. I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch down and then I'm going to open up these two tabs on the actual sewing machine camera and then top stitch one eighth of an inch away from the edge. So that's a quarter of an inch to start off with 
and then open them up and then top stitch one eighth of an inch. You'll see all that on the, um, the camera footage by the sewing machine. So I'm using a standard stitch length on my sewing machine and keeping either my walking foot or Teflon foot on depending on what type of sewing machine you're using. And I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch away at first. Now what I tend to find is this zip likes to come apart so I just pinch it together here while I'm sewing it. And because I'm using a nylon zip I can sew over it. Repeat it for this side. Now I'm knocking my stitch length up to a 3.5 and then I'm going to open up the two tabs so they're wrong sides together so it should look like this and then I'm just going to top stitch along that edge one eighth of an inch away. And then repeat it for the other side. And if you like me, you might find closing the zip up a little bit will help. Okay, so you've gone ahead and done the instructions that I've just shown you on the um, the camera over the, by the sewing machine. You should have a overhang um, which is wider than the width of your um, zip. You need to trim back the overhang to the actual zip width. And you need to do that for both tabs. Okay, so picking up my best friend, which is quilters tape or wash away tape, you're going to get one of the main outer body pouch pocket pieces which has got the fusible fleece attached and we're going to run not the one side that's got the two corner cutouts we're going to run quilters tape along this side on the right side of the fabric So you're going to peel off the backing of this quilter's tape, then you're going to get the zip. You're going to find the centre and just mark. So you're going to match up the two tabs where the two sewn edges are and just basically draw centre line in and then what I should have got you to do is the same on this top edge here as well so so I've got my centre piece um, centre finds there I'm just going to go ahead and do it for the other outer piece as well So you're going to get the zip, right side facing down, match up this edge here to this edge and match up the two centres. 
and stick that into place and then we're going to stick the whole the rest of the way along that edge you will have an overhang of tabs either side you're going to run quilters tape along this edge again on the wrong side of the zip <clears throat> peel off that backing and then this time you're going to grab um, one of the lining pieces that's just got the interfacing attached to it with the right side to right side of this but it's going to be the wrong side of the zip we're going to match it up now I personally like to tip it up at an angle so I can see edge to edge and match up those edges there Let's say. it should be equal here now going over to your sewing machine at the moment we've been using a quarter of an inch seam allowance this is where we're going to scrap the quarter of an inch seam allowance and move over to three eighths of an inch seam allowance just for these um, installing the zip so you're going to use your zipper foot on your sewing machine and so a quarter of a, three qu eighths of an inch away from the edge here along this edge make sure you reverse your stitches at the start and at the end so that's three eighths of an inch seam allowance and we're going to be using a stitch length number um, 2.5 so what you would have seen me um, do when I was sewing that together is leaving my needle down at one point um, along the edge and moving my zip pull out the way you just basically need that zip pull out the way when you're sewing it together so you're now going to go uh, to your iron and press this so the zip is right side facing out and the lining and the main outer are right side facing out as well <coughs> excuse me i keep coughing it's nothing bad i've just got a um, a throat infection and it's warm today so you might hear the fan working in the background which i do apologize <coughs> So I've pressed the lining open, I'm just going to flip this over so it's the right side of the main outer and press that open. Because I'm using a nylon zip I can actually press over it. But just don't keep your iron in that particular area. <coughs> So now we're going to go to um, back to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from this edge here. I'm going to use the stitch length number three on the sewing machine. So that's top stitch along that edge and it would have caught the lining fabric in the on the other side we're going to basically just trim these straight at an angle um, away from these edges here <clears throat> so this is basically parallel to this edge here and nice and straight not at an angle We're now going to go ahead and repeat the same process as what we did before. We're going to run quilters tape along here. You then take your main outer piece, that's the one with the fusible fleece, pop that right side down, stick that into place, flip it over, 
run quilters tape along this edge peel off the back in get the lining pop that on top then we're going to sew those together using three eighths of an inch seam allowance press those two seams press those that seam open and then top stitch one eighth of an inch away i'm going to speed up the the footage because i don't need to repeat all that again um, we're just going to quickly do that now <clears throat> so I've now gone ahead and top stitched and got the pocket lining and the pocket outer attached to the zip go ahead and um, swap your um, foot back over to your walking foot or your Teflon foot on your sewing machine and um, we won't be needing the zipper foot now so we're going to open up the zip partly and then the two main outer pieces we're going to bring up together and clip along the bottom edge that's the edge with the two corner cut out okay so you got that bit then you're going to open it up and bring the two lining pieces together but this time we're going to just pop a clip here and here And then I'm just going to draw two lines on this section here. So we need to leave a turning gap. I'm going to leave around about four inch turning gap. So I'm going to draw two lines. And that's approximately four inches in the centre here. Then we're going to just get the tabs to point the way that we need it to. So this is the line inside. We need the tabs u-shape the bottom of the u-shape curve to point towards the end of the um, lining piece and you're just going to clip that together and you're just going to pop two clips either side of that there and then you're going to flip it around and do the same with this one so this tab U shape needs to go to this side now, which is the line inside. Clip that into place and then pop two clips either side. Okay, so starting from the line in base side on one of the marks, you're going to reverse your stitch here and sew to where this first cutout is and reverse your stitch you're going to sew we're going back to a quarter of an inch seam allowance now then we're going to go and sew along here reversing our stitches at the start and at the end if you struggle to go over this bulky part here you might want to get a bulky seam aid out and match it up so your presser foot is lying flat um, I might have to get that out I will show you anyway um, on one of the edges um, but sometimes I don't have to use it on my Pacific machine make sure you reverse your stitch so it's starting at the end then we're going to sew all the way across this base on the main outer piece and you're going to reverse your stitch at the start and at the end we're not sewing over these corners cut out areas yet then you're going to do the exactly same on this piece where you might need to get the bulky seam made out on this area here and then you're going to finish it off you'll see all this on the video footage i'm going to use a stitch length 2.5 on my sewing machine which is a standard stitch length 
and I've got my um, Teflon foot back on my sewing machine which you might want to put your walking foot back onto your sewing machine. Right, so I've gone ahead and sewn all the way around. You did see me on one of them demonstrate the bulky seam made just so I could get my presser foot to not go up and to ride at a flat angle. What we're going to do is where these two parts here, we're just going to slightly trim back. Um, you're going to just basically get rid of some of that bulk in that area. Now I'm trimming it back to about one eighth of an inch away from the edge. As you can see, I've just trimmed it back here. I'm just going to do it to the other one. Make sure you don't cut into your sewing lines. Okay, going through that turning gap, we're going to not touch those corners yet. Going through that turning gap, you're going to open up the zip fully. And then you're going to bring the bag right side facing out. Now this is where you might need a pokey tool um, to get those corners nice and crisp and those tabs pushed out. Now my testers, some of my testers found the tabs could be a bit of a pain. They don't basically push out properly. I will show you how to push them out properly. So you will be left with the corners raw. That's fine. That's that for a reason. So I'm just going to get my pokey stick out and your stick will come out where the two corners are on all of the layers, where the two cut out parts are, these parts. Okay, so now we're going to sort out these zip tabs. You're going to get your finger up inside and start pushing it out. I'm working from the inside of the lining part here and getting the cocktail, um, the chopstick inside, pushing it up. Same with this one. Okay, open that zip up and push that lining up inside. I like to make sure my lining is lying flat before I press it. Make sure that lining, uh, those tabs are definitely pointing out and pressed out as well. Now I'm just going to go ahead and give this a good press on all over and especially where the tabs are. So I like to put a bit of steam on my iron. You might want to close up the zip for now. Okay, so I've now given that a good press. It just means the um, the tabs are nice and crisp. I'm going to open that up, and we're going to pull out the lining. 
and we're going to finish off the lining piece poking out those corners right okay so going through that turning gap you're going to bring out one of the corners you're now going to open up that little gap that was in one of those corners and you're just going to open it up so we can make a boxy corner you're going to clip that into place you're going to do the same with the other one so it should be around about here there it is open it up give it a bit of a wiggle and you're going to sew here to here approximately three eighths of an inch away make sure you reverse your stitches at the start and at the end and you're going to do that for both both corners okay so we've gone ahead and sewn we're just going to trim back about one eighth of an inch away on both of those sewn corner lines and what we're doing is making the boxy feel inside the lining I'm going to poke those out and you should have a neat finish here and on this side as well so the next thing you're going to do is sew this turning um, gap closed so you're going to do that either by hand sewing or machine sewing you're going to poke the two raw edges up inside and it should be around about a quarter of an inch of seam allowance inside clip along now you can hand sew or machine sew I'm going to machine sew and sew one eighth of an inch away from the edge just from there to there just where the um, turning gap is so you should be some left with something like this we're going to pop that up inside the case, the pouch, poking out those corners. Okay, so your main outer pieces will still have two raw corners here, don't worry about that. They're going to be hidden within the binding anyway. So you're going to grab your main outer um, body piece, your main body piece now. You're going to go inside your um, zip pouch and pull the line in so it's the furthest away possible from this part here to start off with. Where the center is, you're going to get this pouch a match up, but you're going to have around approximately a quarter of an inch overhang of triangle of your main zip pouch overhanging the edge so where my center line is of the pouch is on the center line of the actual um, center mark that we made in the actual um, main body piece you can do the same with this one get your fingers inside move that line in out the way so it's just scrunched up into the center find the center of the main outer and match it up and make sure you have just got that overhang of the pouch on this side right so you're just going to push those in for now and you're just going to base stitch both along here make sure you reverse your stitch at the start and at the end and you're just going to base stitch one eighth of an inch away from this edge here along this edge and along this edge and then we're going to trim away the excess seam allowance the quarter of an inch seam allowance that we've got overhanging on these two Okay, so you're going to pop your fingers back inside and get that lining nice and neat inside. And that is your pouch attached um, to the main body. Now, if you are not making the D-ring or the um, wrist strap, fast forward to the, um, the bit where I start to attach the bias binding section. If you're making the D-ring strap and um, the D-ring and the D-ring, uh, the wrist strap 
um, I'm going to do that bit now. So pop this to one side. You're going to need your wrist strap and your D ring. You're going to, uh, D ring tab. You're going to need your swirl clasp and your D ring. So first of all, we're going to work with the D ring tab. So we're going to bring the two long edges into the center and give that a press. Oh, you can't see that there. We're going to bring the two long edges into the center and press. And that's wrong side to wrong side. You're going to go to your sewing machine and on the the top side so this is classed as my wrong side where the two edges meet on the right side we're going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away from the edge i'm going to use a stitch length number three um on both of those then you'll see me feed the d-ring on so the moon the the curved shape of the d-ring is on the right side of the tab and then i'm going to fold it over and then I'm going to sew as close as I can to this D-ring. Now, on my sewing machine, you can't move the needle position because it's an, a semi-industrial sewing machine. You will need to move the needle position, if you can, to get as close as to the D-ring as possible. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done the <laughs> D-ring prep. I've top stitched as close as I personally can get with my sewing machine. Now it's personal choice of how you want this to be attached to your um, your wallet. So if I show you on this one, my flap opens up here. When I open this up, my zip is on this side. And when I wear my wrist strap, it's on the opposite side of the zip so I can pop my hand there to steady it. Now it's personal choice if you want the zip pull and the D-ring tab on the side that on the same side go ahead and install it there but I like it on the opposite side of where the zip actually pull is once it's closed up. So even though I'm making this as a present I'm still going to install it the same way. So the D-ring needs to go next to, and it doesn't matter which side of the, the pocket it goes onto, you need to just pop it right next to where the, the actual pocket base is and clip the two edges together. And then you're just going to base stitch that one eighth of an inch away using a long stitch length. Now you might want to move this out of the way when you do it. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done that. I'm just going to pop this to one side. And we're going to work on the wrist strap. Now I have got a tutorial um, and I'll drop a link here if you are using um, like a PU. Now my advice is don't use a cork um, for the wrist strap because it can get a bit tedious of the folding and how thick it will is and it won't it won't sew um, very neatly when it comes to the final stages of attaching the, the swirl clasp. If you want to do a PU um, one or a thicker fabric one and you can't use an iron click on the eye in the corner 
I don't know which corner it is on, on the screen, click on the eye or look in the description and it will take you over to making the wrist strap video that I did using PU fabric which I cannot use an iron with. Have a have a watch at that. Um, this isn't something that you have to make now. It can be the very final step um, if you're making a PU one or a leather one or whatever. But as I'm making a fabric one, I'm going to carry on and make a fabric one. So you're going to need your iron, and obviously turned on. <clears throat> so you got your strip. You're going to bring. You've got your wrong side facing up, you're going to bring the two long sides together, two long edges, and press along the edge. And press that fold. Just notice I've got a bit of overhang of interface in there so I'm just going to get rid of it. And then we're going to open that up, bring the two long sides into the centre and press. Now we've got those two pressed into the centre, we're going to bring those two folded edges and give that a press along the edge. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is get your swirl clasp and feed that on while it's still folded. Then you're going to open up the two short edges fully. Bring those two short edges together and match them up right sides together and match up the two edges. and clip. Now you're going to sew, it doesn't matter at what stitch, um, what width you do, anything between a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch away from the edge, you're going to reverse your stitch at the start and at the end. Okay, so now I've gone ahead and sewn, we're going to just finger press that seam open. Okay. So now we've got that finger pressed. We're going to refold the fold. So keeping that seam open, just give that a bit of a finger press there. And the same with this one here. And then we're going to fold it again. And you're going to refold the whole strip. So your clasps should be in the loop now. What we're going to do is just run clips all the way around, <coughs> matching up the two folded sides. Now we're going to top stitch and I like to start on 
the side which has got the clips on. We're going to top stitch all the way around. We're going to do one eighth of an inch away from the edge and we're going to use a stitch length 3.5. As you can see I've top stitched all the way along the two edges. Now the, the swirl clasp is in the centre. Personally I like my top stitching from the outer edge so I'm going to twist this around so that means the top stitching is still on the outer edge just the swirl clasp is now on the outside. That's where my um, my two joins came together. So we're going to squash the two the two parts together. Pop that join about three quarters of an inch to an inch away from this folded edge and clip into place. Okay. Then you're going to top stitch as close as you can to the swirl clasp here and then about, about one eighth of an inch away from where that join line is on this side and you're going to reverse your stitch at the start and at the end. Then we have the two top stitches um, close to the swirl clasp. I'm just going to pop this to one side with the um, just out of the way. Now we're going to work on finishing off the bag, no, off the wallet. So I'm just going to pop my zip pull into the center and we're going to get the binding. Now the binding you would have already constructed via the video or how you make your own binding. It has to be on the 45 degree angle of the fabric so it has this stretch to go around the corners. It needs to measure three quarters of an inch wide once it's double folded. When I say double folded, the two raw edges are into the center of the wrong side. So first of all, I personally like to get this side out of the way where the D-ring is. So I'm gonna push this out of the way. We can build, make this sure this um, is non-creased afterwards. We just need it out of the way. I'm going to overhang my binding and I'm going to open up the f the um, the edge, the folded edge that's closest to the edge here. And the binding is right side facing down. So it should be opened up like that. I'm going to go all the way around clipping this binding into place. Okay, so I've gone to that corner there. I'm going to just take that clipper off. And then what I'm going to do is 
snip that about there. I'm going to open up this binding and bring this corner down to this edge here. So I've got a nice finish, nice vertical um, 45 degree angle finish. Then I'm going to get the binding from this side and open it up and lie that on top of that binding and clip. And then I'm going to go and trim from where that vertical, um, that 45 degree angle part is there on the bot layer below. I'm going to go about two inches away from that and clip off any excess binding. Now I have made a lot of binding because I'm doing the small wallet as well. I know I like making bias binding so. <laughs> So you should be left with a layer there at a 45 degree angle where you started off. Just remove that clip and just make sure that both layers are to the edge of the fabric and then just obviously pop the clip back on. Using a stitch length 2.3 or two, uh, a 2.5 depending on your sewing machine, you're going to sew in the ditch. I'm going to use my tailors all to keep things out of the way but I'm going to sew in that crease all the way around. Reverse my stitch at the start and at the end. So I'm starting off just where that 45 degree angle um, is just off on the actual fabric and just go all the way around. Now you'll see me do all this on the sewing machine. So you've gone ahead and sewn the um, binding to the actual main outer. So we're now going to bring the folded over binding to the right side of the main outer. And you're just going to go and clip all the way around, keeping it folded. Now I'm going to speed up the footage because this does take a bit of a long process. Right, so I've gone ahead and um, clipped all the binding down. When I was going around the corners, I literally pulled it right over. Um, so it has a neat finish and when we sew it down, there will be no creases in it. And I was literally pulling it as tight as it will go. Now you're going to top stitch really close to the, um, the folded edge. You're going to top stitch one sixteenth away from that folded edge. Now I've just left it here. Your folded edge here should be matching up 
to where the sewn line is where we attached it originally to this part of the body so you pull in the binding right over to where that sewn line is and that sewn line should be just underneath that fold now if it if you can see it as you're sewing around get your tailors all into it into the binding and pull it over this is the whole point of the tailors all because it's got a nice sharp point you'll see me do all this on the sewing machine I'm going to use a stitch length 3 point, um, 3.5 um, on my um, stitch length and I'm going to sew from this way so when you are sewing around make sure the pocket is squashed underneath and you're going to sew all the way around I've gone ahead and top stitch all the way around what will happen is is your top stitching from this side will show up on this side and it will just be where that fold is of that binding all the way around if you've got stuck to exactly what I've just said now the next thing we're just going to do is finish off the bag uh, finish off the wallet I keep calling it a bag it's a wallet keep finishing off the wallet you're going to bring this flap forward and you're going to get a clip here and you're going to go and top stitch from this edge here to this edge where we have top stitched on the binding here we're going to go and run a top stitch along here and reverse our stitch up starting at the end and then I'm just going to do another one just close to the edge of this binding and then it just keeps the flap open for us so you got the flap nice and um, top stitch two rows of top stitching and then basically we're going to flip this over mold this pocket back to normal go ahead and stuff it out with um, some tissue paper or something push out those tabs if you need to just press it underneath your iron which I'm just going to quickly do so I'm basically just folding this open and just giving that a bit of a press on each side Trim off any pieces of um, loose pieces of thread that you can see and there you have it, there is your finished wallet. Attach your um, strap to it if you've made one. Now if you're not using the strap there's nothing stopping you just popping it inside and then closing this up like so and then obviously not when you're using it but if you are using it just have it out and then just mould the bag at the bottom uh, the wallet I've done it again I called it a bag and there you go you've got one finished wallet now like I said before at the start of the video when we started making the um, the bag uh, the wallet <laughs> Um, I'm going to just quickly do the um, the small one and I'm going to speed up the footage if you do not want to watch that just skip to the very end of the intro and um, just hear me talk about um, 
there is an online exclusive club that you can join and stuff like that if you are leaving me now thanks for joining me don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like this video if you want to see more content drop us a comment below whether you're going to be making this um, for presents or whatever I'd just like to hear from you thanks ever so much for joining me and if you're not leaving me now carry on watching
is it to make these i just uh, you can make loads i know i've got a few people and um, testers and in the club um i'll talk about my club in a minute have made quite a few of these and they're making them for christmas presents and stuff they're so easy to make now you would have noticed that i talked all the way through this one um construction wise on how to make it and then this one i did a fast video footage you'll also notice i did this a lot faster obviously not because i'm speeding up the footage but because i actually work out and this is if you want to make a lot of these do the prep work first rather than going through the pages so make one you understand the construction once you've made one um following the pattern and then basically do all the prep work first so i'm i basically pressed all the card slots i did i i, I glued everything together i i basically um cut all the holes in where the magnetic snaps needs to go i basically clipped together everything before i went over to the sewing machine stitched all those together then went back did all the pressing turned them right side face and eye then went back to the sewing machine to do all the top stitching and it came together within 35 minutes and that's after doing a couple of these so if you've got a few to make do that prep them all in see uh, in parts like do the the pouches first do all the, um, the card slots first do the flap first do the body first you understand where I'm coming from. The more you make, the faster you get at them. You can make to sell from these as well. So I know some pattern designers don't like doing that, but I personally like doing that. I like you to gain back some money from your mates. So that being said, I've mentioned about my club. My club is an exclusive club. It's a paid monthly club. Um, I'll drop the link below. It's a Patreon club basically we meet well i say we meet i do vi live video chats and um, do exclusive contents for them if you are really liking this video or liking how i teach come and join us on the group we've got plenty of spaces left the link's down below without further ado this pattern is available soon or now <laughs> depending on when you're watching it from rjfmakes.com have a lovely day and I'll see you all soon. Bye.